Welcome to the Nutramedic Report. One of the most popular hours of the week is the Preparedness, Civil Defense, Martial Law, Bank Holidays, and Earth Changes Hour. Our special panel, John Moore and uh, Ann Morrison, uh, host a show Monday to Friday. John's show is, of course, from 7 to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. His website, John's site, is the uh, LibertyMan.com, TheLibertyMan.com. Uh, Ann Morrison, a scientist, of course, her website, Homeland Defense, for the number four, you.com. And Ann, you have, uh, you have uh, some new reports. And John, you have some major things we announced yesterday. You called in and gave us some major updates in the last couple of days of what's going on with uh, North Korea. There's also uh, moves here in America, and you always have contacts inside the government and the Homeland Security, etc. Uh, what's the latest? Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Bill, for having me. The, officially, we're at DEFCON 3, that's uh, one out of, at the scale of 1 to 5, with three, 5 right. being the highest. DEFCON 3, condition yellow. Uh, unofficially, I, I believe we're one or two steps above that. Uh, you know, when, when NORAD goes on lockdown and when they start putting Air Force bases on lockdown, that tells me a, a lot. Uh, thank you, Ann Morrison, for getting us the website. Uh, uh, and here's the website, november 2 yankeeoscarcom That's where you can track all the satellites, including the Korean satellite. Now, I was thinking earlier after talking to Ann, there was two satellites, but I think there's only one. I might be wrong, but... Uh, no, I think you're right. I looked for the other one. I couldn't know, find it. The, the other yeah. one is the one that blew up, apparently, on launch. But the one that, that we do know is uh, going over the United States. Every, basically early evening every day of the week is uh, Kilo Mike Sierra Space 3-2. So here's the deal. If you go to the website I just gave, the home page, november 2 yankeeoscarcom in the upper right-hand corner of the uh, website of the home page will be a little search block, a little blank space for the search engine. And if you put key, Kilo Mike Sierra Space 3-2, you'll, you'll see the uh, the orbit, and they make a, they'll give the uh, orbit uh, uh, about a week in advance of where it's going to be. Uh, beginning about, oh, uh, I'm going to say around 7 p.m. Eastern Time every evening, it's going over the lower 48. So there's your heads up. Uh, now, for those, those of us who live in the country, for example, I have a, a water well with an electric pump. I'll, I will be disconnecting the electric pump every evening for uh, uh, about five or six hours to protect it from EMP because I don't want to lose my ability to have uh, Yeah, you can you know, also put a Faraday water. cage that you, you can uh, make a Faraday cage yourself with chicken wire and put a grounding wire to uh, is something like even a water input pipe but it's actually a good idea to, to ground it. You also can obtain uh, Faraday cage pouches uh, for your electronics or make right. a you know, literally use a uh, an aluminum can and put it to ground as well. Just a garbage can will do the same thing. Well, you're, you're um, right, Dr. The, Bill. But in addition, you need to have it disconnected from the power grid, and that's what turning off the circuit breaker does. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. Because anything attached to the grid, things that aren't attached to the grid, you can get inductive currents, but they're not as likely to knock it out. So, in other words, if your computers are turned off, that uh, if you have a CME, for example, we're going to get a warning sign of a CME coming. You want to turn all your computers and electronics off, so if there's no electronic, if there's no power on them, televisions and everything, it's far less likely they'll get burnt out. The right. most likely well, thing to get burnt out is the power grid and satellites. In Cars would be the last to go, well, by the way. I agree. In addition to having them turned off, I'd have anything uh, unplugged that's plugged into the power grid, and if it's a radio, disconnect the antenna. Now, of course, the next step beyond that is to have it inside a Faraday cage, which could be uh, a, a shielding bag, an, an old microwave oven, uh, a metal box where you have uh, non-conductive material, an old blanket cardboard, something between the electronic device and the metal. Uh, by the way, uh, I talked to our Emil de Toffel from Les EMF, who's a dentist and electrical engineer that has the largest EMF company for, in the world for protection. We have him on periodically. He was on last week. And you could actually put a uh, EMF shield on your entire roof, <laughs> and then put it to ground to actually create an EMF shield for everything inside your house. Yes, so, sir. Uh, and in fact, in, out here in the Ozarks, we had some violent storms the last five years, and metal roofs, uh, after al al almost a century of not being popular, have gotten very popular again. Of all things. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Metal roofs. So we're learning I'm, all I'm, over what our grandparents yeah. did a century ago. You can actually take a staple gun and put a, uh, a uh, what's called an EMF uh, shield with a, with a mesh and then run a ground wire all 
the way through to the ground, uh, through your the, your foundation of your house, and you'll get the same effect as having a steel roof. Absolutely. So you can put it inside the frame. So without changing your whole roof, you can actually put it inside the attic and actually run it all the way down the ground. Okay. And do the same thing because ninety-five percent of the EMF uh, effects are going to be above you. They're not going to go sideways. So if you have it in your roof, you're far less likely to get a thing because any kind of Absolutely. pulse is going to come down from a very high angle when it strikes the house. It's not well, going to come let's, sideways. Let's get back to Korea for a moment. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. It, there's a lot of talk about what they what Korea can and what Korea cannot do. Well, they have this satellite going over us every day. I don't know the size or the weight of this device. I do know that nuclear weapons as far back as half a half century ago uh, could be the size of a volleyball. So half century old technology could easily be in a modern Korean satellite. Why couldn't it be? Of course it could. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so uh, we don't know the size of the satellite. We don't, we don't know the weight of it. We don't know if in fact there is a nuclear device inside that. But I'm not taking any chances. Uh, with, with the way the, these red flags are being raised, I'm not taking any chances. I'm, full, I'm anticipating it could happen, hoping it does not. What I've heard is there's been representations too from Iran and in, uh, and from North Korea to the Mexican government trying to see if they can get them to collaborate with them because all they need to do is bring a container-sized weapon across the border, which basically they're and the Politano is not monitoring or preventing traffic from coming across. They try to showcase that they have radiation detectors, but basically none of the containers are probably being radiation detected or the seal's broken, or anybody actually examining the, the cargo inside. And if you actually fly over a city, everything lights up with the radiation detector, including cat food. I mean, cat uh, lit, kitty litter. So litter. the problem is, unless you know what you're looking for, and you have the proper size detectors, and you actually examine the cargo, you have no idea if a, not a suitcase nuke, but a full container size nuke is being brought across. So you don't need a missile. And you can also have a barge, or a conventional ship, or a fishing ship, two or 300 miles offshore, fire a rocket up at 100 thousand feet and just blow a bomb off and you won't just get 600 mile radius you can get 1500 to 2000 mile radius that's right emp blast and you don't uh, and and that's all you need <clears throat> you don't need to strike need. anything that's you all you need, need so it, it is to be honest with you, they, they used to talk about uh these these bombs that put out these signals that would kill people as being the perfect weapon well this is really even more and a more perfect weapon it, it, it doesn't right. kill anybody it destroys our infrastructure and basically right. lays, uh, lays us as helpless as as uh, small children before our enemies right now in 2000 uh, donald rumsfeld uh, was one of the board members of a swiss company that actually sold uh, light uh, water nuclear reactor technology at the cost of 200 million dollars to the north koreans and then two years later of course he's working with bush and trying to pretend that he never heard about it. he always has these memory problems of course we call him mr aspartame so maybe he drank too much of his own uh, coca-cola but i think he's just a liar and he's a devil uh, so i don't think i don't assume he had uh, what we call a rumsfeld's disease yet uh, like uh, Ronald Reagan had uh, aspartame jelly beans on his desk that probably caused his uh, <laughs> dementia. Um, Maybe so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably too many aspartame jelly beans. Well, they want to put. I, I really like Ronald Reagan. I think it was a good product now, not even label it. <laughs> Yeah, isn't it obscene? Uh, it, it, and of course, it, it, people they, they put crazy, it into sweet yeah. things like why would you put aspartame in something that's already sweet? The reason is they want to kill you. They want to give you diketopiprazine, methyl alcohol, uh, uh, methanol, all the other nasties that'll actually fry your neurons, cause geno and neurotoxic problems, and deform sperm, and cause genetic damage and sterility and brain damage. This is not a guess. This is not Dr. Deagle's theory. This is an absolute fact, and it's not open for dispute. People think they want to dispute it. I'm going to give you an intellectual beating of your life. This well, is Bill, not, I'm going to not, turn not. over to you and Ann, and I'm going to bail out of here. Yeah, so what the real issue is North Korea needs to be neutralized, but not with a Muslim communist uh, dictator in our White House trying to do gun grabs. And uh, right now he's trying to do an unenforceable background check thing that's not going to be properly administered. And it's not going to stop guns to get somebody like Adam Lanza or criminals, but they want to make it harass veterans and citizens that want to arm and protect themselves from social chaos. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We are joined by Ann Morrison and also Alexander Bachman has some new updates on ISON. Just want to read a little bit about uh, Kim Jong-il from the um, Joel Skousen's report. He'll be on next week. Joel Skousen, World Affairs Beats is one of the best reports out there. And his, 
sometimes very kind of wry humor. Uh, China's little bad boy, Kim Jong-un, has rattled the world's cages for the last three weeks, but it appears that all the bravado and threats of nuclear war with the U.S. are going to peter out in a flurry of missile launch tests. The U.S. will even bend over backwards to keep from interdicting any of the missile tests, unless, of course, the trajectory is calculated to hit Japan or Guam. Thus, when the uh, episode is over, Mr. Kim will be able to back down to a more normal level of rhetoric, saving face with the I showed them what I can do miss exercise. The most valuable lesson from all this is the extent of China's deference toward North Korea, even so far as to avoid criticism of the latest Mr. Kim's outrageous and premature threats. Now, the fact is that they have a short chain on, the Chinese do. They try to play both sides of this issue using the Sensu war system. We need to tell the Chinese to stay out of the way while we take their bad dog out to the back of the shed and put a bullet in his head. Uh, America needs to decapitate this government immediately. They need to stop messing around, screwing around and uh, drop neutron weapons on them immediately. They need to stop playing around. They're proliferating nuclear weapons to other people, uh, our enemies. And uh, this regime basically is, I'm mad as hell, i hungry, I bomb you. And if they <laughs> set off an EMP, if they set off an EMP over our nation, they will destroy infrastructure and cause the death of millions. So we can't tolerate it. We need to stop this crap. And we need to act more like the Israelis do. When they see a, an upcoming enemy, they just go in and smack them. Um, we need to stop playing around with our enemies. We haven't prosecuted a war correctly since the Second World War when we defeated Hitler. Since then, we've tied one hand behind our back, put blindfolds on, and said you can only hop toward your enemy. That's ridiculous. And the attitude, if, if, if Iran said even a few of the nasty things or demonstrated nuclear weapons and satellite uh, activity, first off, our satellite killer weapons could kill the satellite quickly, which should be done. But the idea that we tolerate North Korea is ridiculous. The idea that we tolerate China pretending to play this game with us, that's double ridiculous. So that's my opinion on that situation. And if you're listening out there in the strategic arms and military intelligence, get a life. Stop playing games with the American population and thinking they don't just have a range of hitting Guam or, or Japan. They can deorbit any of these missiles anywhere. They can pull in a barge or a fishing boat off the shore and set up an EMP weapon. They can strike Los Angeles today. They can strike the East Coast today if they deorbit a weapon system with a miniaturized nuke that's in an orbit right now. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it, except we do have anti-missile systems, but if it evades those and we hit one of our major population centers, we're going to have the death of a lot of people and a log of egg on the face of the idiot in chief of the White House. So that's one issue going on. We have lots of others, like the emerging super plague. So, and you've got some interesting information about the latest uh, J Stars comet and how it might have induced a solar storm on the sun, which, by the way, happened yesterday, nine point six point five, and how the proton storm already hit us. We had a UV surge uh, that hit midnight yesterday in the Midwest, and is <clears throat> which means it's on the other side of the planet. And we're likely to have, you know, you always have two and a half to four days before you get the plasma storm that can fry your electronics. So we have lots of warning. But, of course, the government is so incompetent, they probably don't warn people that, hey, if we had a bad uh, high-level M-class or X-class, your electronics are all going to get fried. First to go are satellites. Second to go are ground-level power transmission lines. Next are regular electronics uh, that are plugged into the wall or still turned on and not in a Faraday cage. And the very last thing to go are cars. So if cars die in the freeways, everything else has completely been fried. Well, that's right, Dr. Bill. And uh, this was a very long, it's an M, and there, as you know, the, the classes, the uh, classes for the flares that come from the sun go B, C, M, X, and then the second range of X. So this was mid-range, and it was a, it was right in the middle of the M range. So it's a fairly strong one. I think the, of more significance is that the, the flare itself lasted over an hour. It lasted an hour and 15 minutes. And then altogether, uh, all the eruptions that came along with that flare lasted for 19 hours. So although it hit over the, you know, it's directly under the sun, um, at noon at India, so India, Burma, the Indian Ocean, uh, Indonesia, and probably parts of Australia. And uh, they got the most serious UV radiation. But since it lasted for so long, uh, we got some of it too, uh, early in the morning, on uh, on this morning, I guess. And um, it was 
um, a sunspot erupted from a sunspot that is in the center of the solar disk. Now, why is that important? You, you know, you look up in the sky and you see the sun and you can see the whole disk. Well, if it, if the eruption occurs in the center of the solar disk, then it's called Earth directed. That means that it's going to hit the Earth. If it is not in the center of the solar disk, then it may just deliver a glancing blow. Now, this flare was strong enough to impact the magnetosphere, which it will do either late today, I haven't heard yet that it's hit today, or tomorrow, and that's when the CME will hit. Now, the CME is a very complicated, very strong magnetic field. We don't have to worry about ions, but we have to worry about a magnetic field. And what it does is it actually bends our magnetosphere. It pushes us closer to the Earth, and so that's when you get anomalous behavior of people and animals. And I wouldn't be surprised if we had uh, some of that, so you might be aware of that. You also get ground currents, and you get currents in your electrical lines. And yeah. uh, so the power grid might flicker, or it might go out. Um, <sighs> and the ground currents affects the emergency diesel generators at the power plants. We've had several times where CME has come in, produced ground currents, and those... Um, um, uh, diesel generators, the emergency diesel generators, have actually uh, they they have become become inoperable because of because what happens is the ground currents get into those and they burn them up. So this is a very serious thing that happens. And if you have any antennas that are grounded, you want to disconnect the grounds, or you want to disconnect. Usually, what people do is they disconnect their antenna from their radio, <laughs> so that so that any ground currents that are raised by the CME don't get into your sensitive electronics. Um, we had uh, we, so the, it was in the center of the solar disk. It was moderately uh, impactful. That is an M six point five, and it did produce a CME, and it also produced radio noise. So if you had any trouble with your television, it was probably because of this flare that erupted. We had yeah. other, now, what that uh, means. What, what that means basically is that uh, these. The sunspot activity is low, but these storms are getting more and more frequent. At least every couple of months, we're having a major storm on the sun. And well, comets trigger these have, things. Comets can trigger these, too. Might have, might have been instigated by pan stars. Now, pan stars right, are on the, on the other side of the, star, of the sun from Earth. And I, it did create some flares. But and those those sunspots where those flares erupted from have now rotated because it's been uh, the, the sun rotates every 27 days, and those sunspots have now rotated to the central part of the solar disk that faces Earth, and they're still active. Yeah, yeah, that's very important to understand. In other words, the plasma physics. We're going to have Doctor Professor McCanny on next week. He'll be back on probably on Monday in the third hour talking about the. The plasma physics of comets and the dangers to our power grid and satellites, which are very serious in the next two years. Danger window, the worst one is this November. Alexander, you've got some major inputs and updates on what's going on with the ISON and the debris field around to Tell us about it. Yeah, this is very interesting. I think that uh, we should uh, uh, at least uh, talk about it. Uh, there's a group of astronomers that are working out of uh, Australia, I believe, um, and we're in touch with them, and they're working. They're tracking all the kinds of object, objects they've even filmed. Uh, what they believe is, uh, is another system coming into view uh, near Neptune. So... Um, uh, and they just sent me some information. They relayed some information to me uh, right before we, we went on the air. And uh, they said, Comet Ison is not alone. Uh, I'm quoting here. There are traveling companions with it, also a very large debris field behind it. Uh, so that means it's dragging what Ann said in the break. It's dragging a lot of, uh, a lot of objects and it's dragging uh, asteroids or meters or whatever it is, but it's dragging debris from outside of our system into ours. 
Uh, it could be, or it could be that I'm wrong. It's, as it goes through the asteroid field, it's going to grab asteroids in, in its uh, gravitational pull and bring them inside the, 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 the solar system, the inner solar system. So it's going to be interesting what's going to happen there. And then uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish quickly. It says here, this object originated outside the solar system and is not behaving like a normal comet. Well, uh, and maybe Anne could explain what a normal comet is in contrast to something not behaving like a normal comet. Once I'm finished, it says here, we have a noted diameter as over six times that of Earth. Uh, last viewing session, that's the diameter of the object, <coughs> not of the debris field, uh, of the object yeah. itself. Last viewing session, okay. we noticed it's, it's pretty Is big. the object is that large, you're talking about a red dwarf. <laughs> Star, which also has a uh, magnetic field roughly 200 times plus stronger than the sun uh, itself. So uh, a red dwarf star would indicate a very powerful magnetic field, which means the geomagnetic storm uh, induced on the sun would be cataclysmic. Uh, so an object that big. So we're not we're talking about the movement of something that has been referred to as Nibiru, the destroyer Heraclitus, the ancient destroyer that was uh, passed on through the Sumerian and Egyptian high priests. And they would say that there was a battle between this destroyer or the Death Star, if you want to call it, <clears throat> the destroyer, um, the uh, the evil twin of the sun, as referred to by Dr. Mueller, who's uh, proposed that there's an evil twin out there that periodically comes in the hyper elliptical orbit to the inner solar system and knocks in other objects, including comets and asteroids, into the inner solar system that can either cross the pathway of the Earth with a tail or strike the earth or more likely actually just pass near the sun and induce a coronal mass ejection from a plasma discharge across into uh, stellar space. So um, this year I think we're going to see a big event. Um, that tells you this object is probably the danger window this year is November and the danger window next year 2014 is October where another large object is passing the solar system but this may be ISON. It's, it's a very funny they call it that name it sounds like it. I am the sun. <laughs> well, it's interesting. it's interesting I mentioned that because in Matthew 24 in the Bible, it says that uh, during, during the tribulation, which would be pestilences, famines, we already have the famines. Look at North Korea. Look at the pestilences, all the superbugs, uh, earthquakes in diverse places. And uh, aside from uh, all of the wars and rumors of war, I think that this is it. It could be, you know, because I, son, and then you would see the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. And uh, I, son, would be a clear sign of the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just putting that out there. I'm not saying it's specifically... Uh, uh, I'm suspicious that, that, that is this... That uh, being fulfilled, but, you know, it could be uh, the trajectory... Yeah, I'm suspicious... Yeah, I'm suspicious that this object might be the one prophesied by the Hopi Indians as the Blue Kachina. Well, yeah. Yeah, and I know there's other people in other groups that have prophetic warnings because the nature of human beings to be hyperdimensional and know things, even from the dark side, some of it's incomplete. But the, the problem the, is that the Bible has already given us a template of that that's pretty clear. And when you understand there's going to be induced by the space weather a major earthquake, which will cause the literally the sun, just like it did during the time of the ancient battle, uh, during the time of Joshua, for the sun to literally be held in the sky longer so that the uh, Israelites could battle against their enemy. Well, I see that as yeah. happening again, that we're going to have a major disjunction between the lithosphere and the crust. I see a not a pole flip, but a pole slip. Uh, I see major superstorms on the sun that can induce a dropping out of our satellites and our ground base electrical communications. I think the people are not prepping. The government's purposely not telling us, which means they're planning to survive themselves and don't want us to survive. So it's obvious to me that the behavior of President Obama and all the governments of the earth are specifically to get into the way of releasing information that will tell us about what the real dangers are, and they don't want us to prep. In fact, they want to make it illegal. It's actually legal according to Patriot Act 1, 2, and the other associated bills that are out there. They actually have made it illegal to prep. They want World War Z, all right? And that's the right. true facts here. Another thing that I'd like to just mention is the Kachina prophecy. There are two Kachinas. There's the blue and the red Kachina. So the blue Kachina, the, the, according to Hopi, it was uh, Comet Holmes when it exploded, you know, inside the solar system and created this blue, right. beautiful sphere of light. Well, the, the red Kachina would come later, uh, projected maybe 2013 through, 2000, to, through 2015, which would be planet x or the red dwarf or whatever we want to call it but the thing is real 
Now, its trajectory, according to of Eisen, according just to finish off here, is unusual, it says here, which makes calculating its trajectory nearly impossible because we're absolutely positive of it that this thing it has companions with it, and it's not moving correctly. It's not like a normal comet that does its normal, uh, you know, perihelion and everything. So it's, it's an odd orbit. Well, um, Dr. Bill said that it was a hyperbolic elliptic orbit, and probably their models, the ones I've seen, when Panstars came in, it was a hyperbolic uh, trajectory, and uh, now when Lemon's coming in, they say it's an elliptic uh, trajectory, and then he's calling ice on a hyperbolic elliptic trajectory, and they probably don't have a model for that, so that's why they're calling right. it unusual. <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, All right. well, apparently, according to Professor McCann, he thinks that uh, the government uh, is is wanting to do something catastrophic, which is why I think the, the likelihood of an airborne plague, when the Chinese scientists say that H7N9 seven and nine, uh, needs now, and this is, by the way, agreed by the World Health Organization, needs class labs in order to operate with this virus, we have a super plague ready to leap forward. It's now really starting to get ahead of steam on. And the virus replicates and mutates eight times faster than any other previously known virus, including H5N1 and any other virus. So what yeah, we're seeing is a front edge more, of a... Of it a, needs two more uh, things to change before it becomes a plague. Right, and that means very minor genetic changes, which means it's only a matter of time before that happens. Yeah. Uh, my guess is that they want this to happen. They'll tweak it in the lab and make it look plausibly deniable because with the crash of the financial system, for example... Did you see what happened with Bitcoin? Bitcoin lost 60% of its value in the last few days, which yeah. we were predicting it would be a crash. Uh, it turns out some of the um, uh, brothers that say that, uh, that they invented the Facebook, uh, the so-called twins, um, gold prices, of course, are down 5% to 14187 an ounce. Uh, we have, uh, you know, gold is twinned with a Bitcoin. And, of course, the Bitcoin twins are saying that they... Um, you know, cashed in big because, of course, the people who cashed in big on this beforehand made a lot of money, and the people that didn't. We also have the ramping up of the war on um, political and other levels against uh, the American anti-Magnitsky bill. Now, the list of all these so-called Americans that are working with Russian diplomats, etc., or have dual citizenship. Uh, things are heating up. We're in the um, next phase of World War Three. World War Three happened at 9/11. It started then back in a moment. I remember when, I remember, I remember Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. Um, yeah, everything you see in the public news is a manipulation of lie. It's trying to manipulate the conscience. I, I want to explain to people what uh, reality is. And uh, I'm going to go into that 90% for just a second so people will start to get an idea. They did a study some years ago, and this is done at one of the major universities like you know Harvard, Yale, and they were doing a study on psi, which is basically uh, you know mind, you know like, almost like not just spoon bending, but you know changing reality through so things like prayer. And what they discovered is when they prayed, had people pray specifically for people who were sick, they had a higher survival rate. But they they split the study and they actually selected people in the study that weren't in the present; they were in the past. And what they found is when they opened up the study design and opened up the keys, they found that the people who were prayed in the past also had increased survival rates. Uh, it means that reality as you think it is has never been. It means that uh, when we come into the alignment of the will of the Most High God, there's nothing impossible for God. Uh, it means that in inspiration that tells us how to protect ourselves, to literally protect our world, and to call upon the powers of the Most High God, just like the ancient Israelites that marched around uh, the city of uh, and made the walls fall down of Jericho, that the same thing is going on here. We're being poisoned by Fukushima. We're coming into challenges that literally tell us that we must fall on our face and call out to the Most High God to inspire us and give us power. And I tell people the process is you don't have faith, you have to pray for faith. A lot of people think that somehow if you're good enough, God will do something because he, quote, loves you. And people don't understand. It says without faith you cannot please God. But the problem is we aren't the author of faith. He is. You have to pray for faith through love. And then when you receive faith, you have a confirmation of substances that have not yet been received. But you have a confirmation in your spirit that you already have it. 
And that means a solution where there's dealing with things like North Korea, the coming disasters, prepping, surviving, because God wants the people on the earth to survive the tribulation, to survive the end of the ages we're going through, which is going to kill a lot of people, and to have a remnant of population that serves and knows the Most High God. And this is a trial by fire. It's I call the Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego fire, where unless they had faced the Most High God and the fourth man was in the fire, they're not going to survive. We're in that fire. We just don't know it yet. And if we do not receive the gift of faith through prayer and love, we're not going to have the inspiration, the substance to know exactly either what to do or the supernatural, uh, literally, have you want to call it protection that we're going to require. We can prep all we want, and that's good. We're doing God's will by prepping. But the ultimate prep is to pray for faith. Pray for faith that God will give us the substance of either what to do where to be, and God will tell us to do things just like marching around Jericho and say, well, why are we doing this? Why are we moving to a particular place? Why are we doing these things? It's because God demanded it as part of his temple shekel of obedience in order for us to receive the gift of faith for him to supernaturally intervene. That's what we need to do next. I, 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 I agree. I think there's going to, a supernatural events are going to come soon i think that that 97 percent of a junk dna is really something much more than that i do believe that there's going to be a translation of the saints or a, a massive uh, uh outpouring of the holy spirit on this world uh, soon it's, I think it's, it's already good. happening uh, it's already happening one of the words that the lord gave me is that people who understand and believe things that are said on this program and those who are quote the witnesses people like yourself like uh, ann and john he said, those who believe and know before the time of great trouble, they also are called. What God's doing is he's calling out his, quote, and it's not an absolute number, it's a spiritual number, 12,000 from each tribe. What God is saying is he's going to pour out and seal in his heart and on their forehead the intentions of their mind, God's will on the 144,000. What he means is he's, he's literally holding back judgment until he does that sealing process. We're in that process of sealing right now. The trouble hasn't hit. We have warnings of trouble, wars and rumors of wars, pestilence coming, etc. We're on the nice edge of a thermonuclear war, economic chaos, uh, an airborne plague, etc. What's going on right now is that if you know these things, just like Peter knew, uh, when they said uh, before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Who do you say I am, Peter? And Peter replied, You're Jesus Christ, the incarnation of the Son of the Most High God in the flesh. That's what he said. And he said, that you were not taught this by me or anybody here on earth. You were taught by the Spirit of the Most High God. If people grasp that in their spirits and know and have a personal relationship with God, they're going to make it. If they don't understand that and they think that preps or guns or anything else is going to save their hide, it's just going to delay the, the I call the, their expiry date on this planet. It also isn't going to save their spirit if they aren't uh, in line with the Most High God because the only way to be saved is to have a personal relationship. And now you don't go to heaven. It simply becomes evident that you already had a heavenly relationship with the Creator. And you no, don't go to hell. It just becomes evident you never had a relationship. It's that simple. I mean, people look at taught the gospel nowadays. They get taught what I call social gospel to make them feel perfectly righteous. I call it hell insurance, that they really never had a relationship with God. They never had a love relationship, whether they're dying of cancer or their finances are destroyed or something horrible happened in their family or their nation. In order for supernatural things to happen, it requires that we receive the gift of faith through trust and love of the Creator, and then He gives us faith. That's how the process works. And people say, is there a magic formula? Yes, there is. The magic formula, you have to love your Creator, and you have to cry out to Him that you're empty and you have no answers. And guess what? Then He gives you faith. And we're there now. We're at that point. I want you to answer that, Anne and John and, and you know, Alexander. Tell us what, what you think that means in terms of North Korea possibly hitting our cities or starting a nuclear proliferation. And we have these crazy comments by China saying that they're going to start World War III if we, quote, take away Iran. I'm pretty certain John Kerry's visits every two weeks are not going to stop uh, the Israelis from taking out the nuclear facilities in Iran. Well, I published an article, uh, Bill, uh, on uh, alexanderbachman.com uh, uh, two days ago. World War III is a little behind schedule, it's titled, yeah. but all is going according to plan. And basically here, uh, they want the mass kill. That's what they want. They want, they want, Satan wants the mass kill. So we could see here that uh, uh, Pamper Boy over there in uh, North Korea, Pamper Boy, because he grew up while his father, Kim Jong-il, 
was addicted to pornographic movies from Hollywood, right? That's the type of life that this tyrant, this new pamper boy, 28-year-old uh, Kim Jong-un, poses as a threat. This guy is a, a full-bred psychopath and thinks that he's like the bully on the block because he has six nuclear weapons, which is frankly ridiculous. His, his whole country is on, on, on the brink of collapse. Most of the people are, uh, don't need anything. Uh, they earn $3 a month in a salary if they have a job. And, and by the way, the money that goes to the, uh, to the plant where up in, um, uh, in, the, in North Korea that's built by the South Korean factories, all that money is being confiscated by the North, and it's been going to, to buy luxuries for this elite, including these generals. And the big thing that really pissed off uh, Kim Jong-un was the fact that we put, um, with the, by the way, the Chinese collaboration, we put uh, a, a limit on luxuries. That's what pissed off uh, and started this latest tirade by Kim Jong Un. I call the Cinnabon dictator. Yeah, th- this is the type of guy who who says, okay, the only source of fuel you're going to have is like some wood for you to cook if you are lucky, if you are part of the mi- North Korean middle class. Uh, color, right. The use of color is prohibited. I mean, this is a place where that 1984 scenario of the speakers, you know, in the streets of uh, brainwashing the population about our great supreme leader are playing in the background, mind, uh, mind uh, brainwashing the population. This is just uh, beyond extreme. The, the children, their growth is stunted. Most of the generations are already compromised. North Korea is just uh, another Ethiopia but on steroids because they spend 90-some 90, 90 percent of their uh, internal GDP on the weapons. Uh, it's a military country that just is interested. Yeah, but it's also, it's also getting collaboration from China. China tries to pretend that it's not in control of North Korea. China, China is the master of the bad dog uh, China, of North Korea. And the fact is they lie to us and try to pretend they're not. The fact is what we need to do, and this is, if I was president, this is what I do. I call up the Chinese dictators because they're a dictator communist. And I'd say, stay out of the way. We're going to take your bad dog out in the back of the shed and put a bullet in his head. And we have you targeted from space and otherwise. And I know you want to attack us, maybe in a decade or two. But if you do, if you twitch sideways, we're going to nuke every one of your cities and him with plasma weapons from space. So you need to step aside while we take your bad dog that's under control because it puts you in danger too, and we're going to kill it right away. That's what needs to happen. We need to stop playing around. And get, by the way, this is a judgment from God. God tells us at times it's time to move in and clean house. And it needs to happen with North Korea so the citizens don't live under the boot of these maniac dictators. They can have a normal life, a normal meal, work at a normal job, drive a normal car, have appendant rights, have the option to become a Christian and believe in the Most High God and not live in tyranny. And unify them with their brothers down in the south. Right, and I'm sure within four years, you'd hardly be able to tell the difference except the stunted growth of the younger children have been destroyed, their mental health destroyed. But we can help them. It we can help them. Germany. The only way is yep. we, need to, we need to amputate, and the same with these religious extremist Muslims. Our policy of supporting al Nusra, al-Qaeda with uh, Obama, the Muslim, is obscene. Pamper boy obscene. has fallen. Yeah, he needs to go.